specific religion, right? Okay. Um, so how, how are you going to figure it out? Tell me, tell, me, tell me your plan, tell me your journey. So, I'm going to research about it. I've been raised like in an Orthodox house, yeah. but there's some things like, I don't agree with. Yeah. Like, you know how in Christianity they say how like, Jesus is basically God, I don't really believe in that. That's perfect, brilliant, brilliant. I believe in like, basically an idol, and I don't believe in idols. So. Wow, you know what you're saying um, coincides with Islam perfectly. Because one of the difference between Muslims and Christians, right? The fundamental difference is we don't believe Jesus Christ is God. Um, we believe he's separate from God. We believe he was sent by God. He was a man prophet chosen by God, right? Um, and one of the main doctrines in Islam is we don't worship the creation. We worship the creator. So there's no room for idols and so on and so forth. So it's interesting that you're saying this. Um, which coincides with Islam. Have you looked into Islam? Okay. I have many friends that are like, um, Islamic and they tell me stuff about it. Yeah. And I just, you know, some teach me about it. Well, I wanted like, to look into it like two weeks ago, but then yeah. I had something coming up. But it's actually really handy. So it's a sign from God. Okay, now, um, do, you know, do you know Islam's concept of God? Yeah? Um, Islam's concept of God is simple. God is one. Um, we worship God alone. God is unique in his names and attributes. So when we say God is all seeing, we see, but it's not the same as God. Yeah? Um, we hear God is all hearing, but not the way God can hear everything. Yeah? Um, so God's names and attributes is unique to him. So God is all powerful, right? And I think the best way to illustrate this is in the Quran, chapter 114, there's a four line verse that describes God. Yeah? And it starts, Audhu Billah Ibn Shaitan Jim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Kul huwa Allah ahad. Say Allah is uniquely one. Yeah? Do you agree with that? Because right. God is uniquely one. Yeah? Allah is Samad. Allah is self sustaining, eternal. Yeah? Do you agree with that? All right. Good start. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He did not beget nor was he begotten. He was not born nor does he have children. Do you agree with that? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is a good sign. Uh, and number four is Walam yukullahu kufun ahad. There's nothing comparable to God. Yeah? So right now we agree on the definition of God, right? You agree that God deserves to be worshipped. Um, do you believe God sent prophets and messengers? Yeah. Can you name a few? Noah. Noah. Yes. Jesus. Moses. Um, Abraham. Yeah. Um, um, Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. These are all men chosen by God. Yeah. Who came with the same consistent message. Yeah, because even in Christianity, um, Jesus taught one God. He never said, "Worship me," right? Um, Abraham, he believed in one God. Moses, he taught the Ten Commandments. First commandment is, "Your Lord is one." Don't make images of God. All of the messages of God and the Prophet Muhammad taught there's only one God. It's a consistent message. Yeah. So my question to yourself is, right? Um, okay. And the last thing is, right, you know, Islam is based on five pillars. Come on, you must have the... Um, that's the only thing they teach you in RE in this country. They don't teach you the fundamentals, but they teach you the five pillars, right? The five pillars is basically the first one, the Shahada, which is the testimony that there's only one God. Yeah. And the belief that God sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Um, praying five times a day, which keeps us connected to God. Yeah. Um, protects us from sinful behavior and um, doing like immorality. Yeah? Um, the third one is zakat, which is the annual charity. You give 2.5% of your annual wealth. Um, and then we in the Islamic community, we actually um, eradicated poverty. This was when Islam wasn't like five people in the desert. Um, we was like the greatest empire and 
one third of the world was under the Islamic authority and we didn't have no poor people. Because of this annual charity of people giving 2.5% of their annual wealth, money that they haven't spent in one calendar year and giving 2.5% of it. To a point that um, there's no more poor people who was putting it back into infrastructure and education and so on and so forth, right? Um, the fourth one, you're going to hear a lot about it, is um, fasting. So the month of Ramadan, um, we're going to be fasting. Yeah. Um, and Hajj, which is the yearly pilgrimage. Is there anything out of the five pillars that you fundamentally disagree with? No? What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim? Because you believe in God, you believe in the messengers, you believe in the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Um, you believe that God deserves to be worshipped. The five pillars, you don't disagree with it. So two weeks ago, you're looking for religion. You're telling me your fitra. Fitra basically means your natural inclination, your natural, what God created you upon is clean. It's upon fitra. It's upon the belief that there's one God. It's unnatural not to believe in God. It's unnatural to believe in multiple gods. Yeah. You believe in one God. It's natural that we worship the creator, not the creation. So I think you have the belief of a Muslim. Yeah. What's stopping you from uttering the statement, we call it the Shahada, and getting the keys to paradise? Because the criteria to enter paradise is um, the Shahada, the testimony of the tongue, the belief of the heart, and actions of the limbs. Yeah. The actions of the limb we went through in regards to the five pillars, praying five times a day, um, which you don't fundamentally disagree with. So I'm just going to put you on the spot now and ask you the question. What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits to the God of Abraham, who believes in one God, worships God, um, who believes and follows the final revelation, the perfect unchanged word of God? Nothing really, but I need to discuss like sort of with my mum because yeah. you know it's she she raised me in like an orthodox household and yeah, yeah. Um, I just don't know <coughs> my mum is so okay orthodox household right what does that mean because the when when she what does she believe because orthodox household what does she believe. Yeah. But since she was like, you know, people kept telling her she's Christian, so she just says, you know, I'm Christian to everyone. So the fact of the matter is, if she believes the same thing as you, then she's a Muslim herself. If she believes the same thing as you, then she's not going to be accepted in churches. Because one of the Orthodox Christian teaching is the Trinity. Yeah. What's your mum's belief on the Trinity? Or what's your belief on the Trinity? Because I'll be honest with you, from what you've said to me, I would assume your mum has rejected the Trinity. Trinity basically means the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're not three gods, but they're one God. So Jesus is equally God. Um, the Father is equally God. The Holy Spirit is equally God. They're not three different gods. They're one God, right? And your mom doesn't believe this. You don't believe this. The fact of the matter is, I think when you, we, we have stigmatized these words. I'm a Christian. I'm an Orthodox Christian. They're Muslims. We're different. What was Jesus? Yeah, Jesus never said, oh, um, described himself as Christian. Even Abraham, peace be upon him, um, when he prayed to God, he said, Oh God, make my children submitters to you. Yeah. Now, if I was to translate that prayer, one, one of the words into Arabic would be, Oh God, make my children Muslim. Muslim means someone who submits to God. So we're not, we're not Mohammedans. Um, someone who worships the Prophet Muhammad. Does that make sense? We're someone who submits to God. Um, as a man, as people, we may feel like doing a few things. It's like we don't follow our desires, 
we go back to the teachings of God um, that have been perfectly preserved. Do you know much about the preservation of this book? For example, um, from the time of the Prophet, when this book was revealed, right, 1400 years ago, we got the Quran carbon dated in the time of the Prophet Muhammad in a university in Birmingham. Yeah. We have millions of people who have memorized this book in the language it was revealed. The Prophet Muhammad spoke Arabic. We've got people who memorized it in Arabic, word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. My, my white brother there, right? Um, born and brought up in this country, embraced Islam. Um, he knows Arabic, he's memorizing the Quran. I'm memorizing the Quran. Do you know what I mean? We've got people from different ethnicities, different nationalities who have um, remem memorizing the Quran in the languages preserved. Does that make sense? Um, so, going back to you, what's stopping you from being a Muslim? I don't think your mum would have an issue. And the reason I'm posing this question to you is, right, I've had many people who have become Muslim in this conversation, like just generally. Like they're walking, they're on the way, they're looking for God um, by the permission of Allah. Um, we had a conversation because this isn't by chance, yeah? This is ordained by God. God wants you to become Muslim. God wants you to have this conversation. God wants you to walk away with the Quran. God wants you, you've been asking God, you've been looking for God, right? And then here we are having this conversation. Here I am putting this question to you because the fact of the matter is, you could tell me, I don't want to be Muslim because of A, B, C, D, yeah? And I would try my best to resolve A, B, C, D. Um, but unless you phrase it like that, what's stopping you from being a Muslim? It's like you realize nothing is because you have the belief of the Muslim. You can leave um, this conversation and look deeply into the Quran. You can leave the conversation, but the fundamental beliefs you have yeah, is just about building on it. Does it make sense? There's nothing I've said about Islam which you disagree with. So again, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits to will to the one true God and you said your mother but the fact of the matter is right um, once you're proactively looking into religion practicing religion practicing Islam excuse me you'll notice that she believes what you believe and she will be embracing what you embrace she's not gonna say um, what you're doing is wrong yeah and if she does She's entitled to it and we can have that conversation. I'm like, why do you think it's wrong? She believes what you believe. She's not harming anyone. Um, this is going to change your life in a positive way. Does it make sense? It's going to give direction to your life. Because um, the fact of the matter is, you know, in Islam, right? In the Quran, um, everything which is forbidden is bad for you. Everything which is permissible for you is good for you. Yeah? There's nothing that is in Allah has said, don't do it, which is good for you. Yeah? And I don't think your mom's ever going to disagree with anything that you're doing in Islam. And I think, inshallah, by the permission of Allah, she's actually a Muslim and she would embrace Islam. And a lot of people who've, in your situation who've become Muslims, their parents are happy. Does it make sense? Because it's, it's preventing you from immorality, it's protecting you, and it's giving you a perfect guidance. Yeah, I feel like I'm talking so much. You talk. How do you feel about what I'm saying to you? Well, I, I do agree with you, but you know, it's, it's it's like also new in a way. So yeah. I just, in a way, I'm hesitant. In a way, I'm quite you know intrigued. Yeah. But I still feel like I need to discuss it with her. Yeah. No, no, no. That that's fine. Um, discuss it with your mom, and then when are we going to continue this conversation? Bring, bring, your, bring your mom here even. Next Saturday, whichever Saturday you're available. Um, there's some Fridays I'll come here as well. Um, let's set a date, set a time and then think. In fact, I can even bring, um, you can speak to some sisters who have become Muslims, reverts. Do you know what I mean? And then you can speak woman to woman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Woman to woman, girl to girl, feminine, women to, female to female, whatever you want to call it, right? Because... Um, yeah, like with me, being a man, I come from the man perspective. Does it make sense? Um, 
a lot of the beauty in Islam, for example, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Um, he was saying, no white man is better than a black man. No Arab is better than a non-Arab. Um, so, bang, he destroyed racism, right? Came along and said, look, um, gave rights to women. He said, the best amongst you is the one who's the best to his wife. Yeah? A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, who should I give my companionship, my love, my time to? He said, your mother. The man said, who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your father. So there are ways that Islam hires the ranks of women, you know what I mean? And other women will be able to articulate to you in a way that you'll probably be able to relate to. Because um, there's a reason Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Um, in England, in Europe, um, ironically in America, more women are embracing Islam in Europe and in America and the UK. Why is that? Because it gives clear-cut rights and um, respect to women. So um, I think what you've said makes sense. I'm not going to pressure you any further because you want to discuss it with your mom and I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Do it. Um, yeah, do you have any questions for me? Yeah? How do you feel generic, generally about what I've said? Most or all? <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Most, which, which ones were you a little bit unsure about? Um, not really, I just watched it wrong. Are you sure? No, that's fine, that's what I feel. Because um, you're, you're entire, if there's something you're like, um, you're unsure about, just ask me now. Like, if there's something that one of your Muslim friends said or one of the non Muslims said and you feel like, oh, I want to, like, I wasn't quite sure about it, I didn't really understand it, or why do Muslims do this, and why can't they do that, and why do they have to do this, or anything, like, ask. Now's the time. You can, when you get home, you can write it down, um, and then with your mom, you can come back, have this conversation, or we can organize it. If you want, um, I can put you in touch with some sisters, you can have that conversation with them, it's like, whatever you want. Would you be interested in speaking to some sisters? Yeah? Um, Okay, um, would you be willing to come back with your mum if she's inclined to it? Or maybe even continue this conversation if you've got more questions next week as well? Because I'm here next week. Um, what I'll do, I'll give you this number. Um, numbers there. I've actually given this number to somebody else. Um, Can I just take a picture? Um, you could do. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you give her a call, she's actually a reaver. She's from Croatia. Well, she's initially from Croatia. She's been Muslim for like seven years. So she was practicing Islam in Croatia for four years. Came to the UK, and yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm gonna let you go. I'm really, really happy about this conversation. I uh, really appreciate your time, and. Yeah, there's not really much more for me to say, thank apart from you. thank you. You take care. What's your name, by the way? Oh, Darina. Darina um, Ridwan. Take care. Nice Bye. Pleasure.